We touched a little bit on intellectual property in this other project, which was also part of the investigations we've been doing recently under the title Play Van Abba. And this was Picasso in Palestine where um, we took the invitation of the Art Academy in Palestine, which is here, to show one of the two Picassos that we have. Uh, it's a Picasso which is painted in 1943, so during the occupation of Paris during the Second World War. So it's in a sense of work which is made in one occupation going to another occupation. And also the politics of Picasso, in a sense the re of Picasso, the radicalism of Picasso, becomes much more evident in this project, certainly for me and I think for many people that were involved, than he ever would in, in the myriad of populist exhibitions about Picasso which are done in order to sell tickets for museums up and down Western Europe and North America. So this was the space where it was sold, and this is the work, and this was a two-year project to get permission. Because of course we were taking it, and again, with we're challenging in a set, or challenging is too grand a word, we're working with the question of law yeah, and, and, and juridical issues because we're trying to take this work to a country that doesn't exist. There is no country called Palestine. I mean, there is, of course, but there's no country, if you look it up in a book of countries, there's no country. You know, go straight from, whatever, Puerto Rico to Poland, no, it wouldn't be that, but you know, if there isn't a Palestine there. Um, I don't know if Puerto Rico, so it's interesting. But, um, but, uh, but um, the, point, the, point, the point being that for insurance company, for a transport company, for a company that is going to um, uh, give you a, a, an Atacarnet, which is a, which is a, a, main, a means of export-import, yeah, Palestine doesn't exist. So what happened in this two-year odyssey is a whole series of personal negotiations. The head of the insurance company came to Ramallah to visit Ramallah in order to find out that it did exist, in a way, but in order to see the conditions and actually to approve it. We had fascinating discussions with customs officials, endlessly, um, who in the end proved, proved helpful. And here is the work arriving in Ben Gurion Airport in Israel, which does exist, of course. And here it is driving along the separation wall, being taken through Israel. Here it is going through Kalandia checkpoint into uh, Palestine, and here it is arriving in the Art Academy in Palestine. Here it is being lifted very gradually up into the office, and here it is. And in a sense, it was all about this yeah? the fact that the label has on it from Eindhoven to Palestine. And this was, this was an important aspect, in a way, of, 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 of what, we were, what we were somehow talking about, because it was important that we, through this project, tried as little as possible to compromise the idea that this place that doesn't exist does exist. Because one of the objectives, I think, from Khaled and, and from many people, and it's important, this was an invitation from them. You know, we were responding to an invitation. It wasn't, if it, if it had been our initiative, it would be wrong. But we were responding to an invitation from the art students who wanted to see a real Picasso. And even though, of course, there are 25 real Picassos in Jerusalem, just 10 minutes down the road in the normal circumstances, the vast majority of those people can never go there because they don't have Israeli ID, so they're stopped at the border. So they can never see those works. So to bring a Picasso just that 10, 15, 20 minutes extra to Ramallah is to bring it across a whole border of conflict. Here it is being unpacked and being very carefully guarded by the Palestinian army. And here again, I think this is a very nice photograph. <laughs> The sort of inspection of the painting and the inspection of the person inspecting the painting. <laughs> Make sure you're doing it. This is Louis. He's, I, I'm very proud to say I got a, uh, uh, an email today that he's now, through this whole process, we got to know people, and he's now going to be the conservator of the Yasser Arafat Museum uh, and working to conserve the, uh, the, the office of Yasser Arafat, which is, in, which is in Ramallah. So the kefir and everything like that, which is beginning to deteriorate. You know, they need. They need, so, so we'll become the sort of advisors on how to preserve it, which, I'm, which just sort of spontaneously happened during Louis Snailer. Um, and this is from now, when the guards are actually taking photos of themselves next to the painting. And remarkably, Slavoj Žižek, with his end of Europe, uh, turns up and gets interviewed. And here he is by the painting itself, with the guards still there. And here's the opening, and this is Fayyad, who's the, who's the Prime Minister of, uh, of Palestine, talking at the opening with Khaled Durrani, who's the person who initiated it from, uh, from the, the uh, International Art Academy of Art in Palestine, and, and me. Uh, and here's the crowd, it was quite busy, and you see it was quite busy, so it's like every Picasso exhibition everywhere in the world, it attracts a lot of people to come and see. 
And here was a little room where we showed the Picasso, and we built this special. So we made a museum. So there's a sort of nucleus of a museum in the middle of the of city, and here it, here it is being well guarded. And we also showed the documentary exhibition. We showed the, the crate, so you understood that it wasn't only a very important that it was Picasso in Palestine, it was the whole project. And there's a film being made of it, there's a book that's being made of it. So this whole negotiation, which I'm talking about, is part of the project itself. And in Jerusalem, which because people cannot uh, see it very easily, they're in Jerusalem, and certainly Israelis cannot go to Ramallah. So in Jerusalem, there was a documentary exhibition at the back. You see two copies of the work, which were made by the students in the academy. And those were shown. And here we have a lecture in Jerusalem, which is that space 10 minutes away that most people cannot cross. And then we had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, media attention for it, which was kind of nice. And then maybe the most beautiful moment in the, in the whole thing was uh, a few days after the opening, this uh, came in the post. And it's a drawing from a political prisoner in an Israeli prison. Um, and you see that he's modified the, the original drawing. You can see the original drawing there. He's added his hand. Um, and he says on the back, this is the postcard. This is all they're allowed to, uh, to send out of the prison. This is the, this is the communication postcard that they're allowed to send. And this says that he feels very lucky that the Israeli authorities only give them white postcards and not postcards with pictures on, because that means that he can do the drawing of the Picasso as a way to be there and to share in the moment of the Picasso being in the Netherlands. It's a very sort of emotional thing, obviously, but I think it shows you that, in a sense, there are also cartoons of this in the Palestinian newspapers, that it entered, in a way, popular culture. But it also, because of this relation between one occupation in 1943 and another occupation in 2011, it brought the political Picasso back. And it allows, I think, us to think about Picasso not only as this womanizing, drunk, egotist, yeah, but also as an artist who is extraordinarily engaged. And this, this helps us to do that in ways that I don't think any exhibition in Western Europe could do. But what it means is that when this exhibition comes back, if it comes back, to, to, uh, to Eindhoven, it will, be, it will be changed by this journey. It will be politicized in a certain way. Um, and so I think I should close there. I had a little uh, conclusion, but I think uh, you can uh, enjoy the pictures and, and hopefully see a little bit about where, where we're trying to go. It, it's important to say that one idea behind the, 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 the future of the museum is the idea of a, I'll just show this slide, let's talk about the first one. Um, the idea of dispersing the museum and dispersing the collection. And that's one thing that I hope together with Basif, if we're successful with the fundraising, we can do next year where we can bring parts of the collection here to SALT and to show it together with works that will be chosen by the people in SALT and then hopefully acquire those works for the collection in Eindhoven so that there'll be a direct relationship between the two. So thank you very much indeed.